to end of union break. What are you going to the top? Divide by x. What do I get? 4. Four. Right over x. So all I'm doing is dividing by the x. And on the bottom now, I can bring that x squared in because they both have a square root. So what do I get on the bottom? 9. 9. So what's, what's all this stuff go to? Zero. Zero. So I end up with 4 over the square root of 9. Do you see how this is the same rule? Leading coefficients. The top and bottom are the same powers. 4 over square root of 9. I could have just went straight there. It's the same rule. You just didn't see it in pre-calc because you dealt with only polynomial ratios. But it's the same rule. You see that? All right, mind blown, I can accept. That means you see it. It's not that big of a deal, to be honest, but it is kind of nifty, a little nifty. Let me see, what am I forgetting? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, there we go. One last type of these. So we got all this here. Sure, go ahead. All right, I mean, that was a good quiz. Now just take a few seconds here to think about this. I would love for you to tell me the wrong answer right now because the first level thinking is not going to get you there. But at least that means you're doing the first level thinking. So what, somebody have a, I uh, already told you, it's okay if you get it wrong because it's, it's, it's a little weird. But what do you, what's the first thought about this? What is the limit as x to infinity of this? As x gets really big, what does this piece do? So if I put a, a, a 9 in there, that's, that's kind of a big number, right? What if I put a 9,000 in there, it's even bigger. So what happens as x goes to really big? What's the output of this piece? Really big, right? So it's going to infinity. There's no limit. If I keep making x bigger, the result of this will get bigger always. That's infinity. So this looks like infinity. And of course, what's x doing as x goes to infinity? So what's the wrong answer here is zero. Why is that a wrong answer? Because infinity does not equal infinity. Oh, shit. This is all about who's going to infinity faster. Right? Now watch this. Let me show you an example. 4 minus 1, 40 minus 2, 400 <coughs> minus 3, 4,000 minus 4. These numbers, are they going towards infinity? Yes. Yes. These numbers, are they going towards infinity? Yes. Yes. Is the difference between them becoming smaller and smaller? Why not? Because this one's going to infinity faster. faster. Holy shit. So what we're going to learn in calculus that will really help out with this problem that you're not allowed to use yet is something called L'Hopital's rule, and that deals with the fact of what I just said. One thing about calculus, we learn how to take what's called derivatives. We learn how to take slopes of anything, right? And it tells me the rate of change of something. And what did I just say? The answer to this depends on who's going to infinity faster. All right, Jeff, we don't know what you just said. We're not allowed to use it yet if we do know it. So what the shit do we do? Well, why was this one easy? Because it is a ratio. And I know what to do with ratio. So how could I possibly make this into a ratio? Oh, oh shit. What does your brain say right now that we've talked about a couple times since there's a radical in there? There's a radical minus something. So what could I try to use? 
conjugate. I love it, right? So what would the, I multiply top and bottom of this by what? What's the conjugate? I'll get it started. Plus x, I like it. So here, I'll, I'll do half of it. I'll do the bottom. You guys done yet with your half? No. <laughs> All right. This footy joke. Uh, what's the square root of this times the square root of the same thing? Yeah, it's that thing, right? Half of that times half of that makes a whole of that. Oh. And then the middle terms cancel. That's why that we use this idea, because all the radical shit goes away. Negative x times x. Now I can analyze this. I've taken away the problem. The problem was it was infinity minus infinity, which we now understand is an indeterminate form. So by doing this, I've taken away the problem. On the top, I get... 3x squared plus 2, and on the bottom I get this business. Get out of there. Can anyone tell me the answer? Anybody see how the um, degrees match up? Is there a higher degree on the top or the bottom? Beautiful, because what's the degree of the bottom? First, because it's the square root of an x squared, and the top is 2. So if the higher degree is on the top, the whole thing is going to Zero. infinity. Because what I'm divided by can't keep up with this. So the whole thing just goes to infinity. It actually is exactly like the one I just put down there. This one is going to infinity faster than this one. So this answer is going to be infinity. Crazy sauce. Say that one more time. <laughs> Crazy sauce. Uh, um, this one is going to infinity faster than this is. Do you see how plus two doesn't mean shit in this problem? So then really, what is it? What is it? It's 2x. 2x minus x is x. As x goes to infinity, x goes to infinity. It's crazy, right? But that's kind of like the hand wavy way to do it. Sorry, did you say it's the hand wavy way to do it? Have you never heard a teacher go, let's do it hand wave, hand wavy kind of way? No. Uh, so you kind of wave your hands and make magic. So, so have you ever heard somebody say, when I'm letting X get really big, this two doesn't mean shit? Or, you know, some variation of that. <laughs> so well, I love you guys. Here's the, here's the hand wavy way to do this. As x gets really big, subtracting 4 is meaningless, right? If I have $18 trillion and $4 fall on the ground, I'm not going to be as worried about it as it would be right now because I don't have it, right? So when x gets really big, subtracting 4 is nothing. As x gets really big, 6x is nothing compared to this. So the hand wavy way to do this problem is to erase that shit and go it's negative one-third. But it's not a valid, formal way to do it, but it's the right frickin' answer. But it's still what's called the hand-waving way to do this. Don't, don't look at that. Look over here. <laughs> yes? So does that mean that just looking at that initial problem that you wrote up, yes. um, we can't just be like... Uh, you can at least tell what your work should lead to. Okay. It should make sense. Thank okay. God there's a way to make sure that it makes sense. Okay. So if I would have had not the four there, what would the answer have been then? What's the square root of x squared? What's x minus x? Zero. Then the answer would have been zero. And all this work would have gotten me to zero. zero. So then it would have jived. I can actually tell if the answer makes sense. I like it. You always want to see, is there a way to tell what I get makes sense? If there isn't a way, you're like, oh my god. Who knows, right? Okay. Just blah, blah, blah. Sweet. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to. Let's see. Barf, barf, barf. Oh, oh, okay. let me show you this picture real quick. This is, I kind of talked about this before. This might make some of you guys go into convulsions, but we'll see if we can make it. Oh, 
Oh boy. Oh, there you go, Jeff. Works better when it's turned on. Uh, let me see, there's something else. What did he say? I don't know. That's all right. So if the limit of a function, this is what I was saying before. This is a beautiful picture of what I was trying to say the other day. If the limit of a function as x goes to infinity is some number, some finite number, there must be some point past which you never get further away from that number. So this is the same thing as building that box up, but now I'm going, at some point, if this never happens, if you're always uh, as far away from it as you want to be, then that can't be the limit. So for example, here, here's what I wanted to say. That's right, beautiful. You missed all that, but that's too bad. Um, what is the limit as x goes to infinity of sine x? Those sound like inputs, not outputs. This is all a question about outputs, right? This is asking you what are the outputs of sine doing as the inputs get really big. Now what does sine do all the damn time? Yeah, so it's always contained between 1 and negative 1, right? If the limit was 0, which is what a lot of people say it is, then somewhere it should get closer and closer to 0, right? And this never does. It's always... Uh, this far away and then this far away, it never gets closer and closer. So if I had the limit, now here's this, is that, do you guys see that? This is what's called an oscillatory problem. This doesn't have a limit because it's oscillatory. Oh shit. But you can have an, an uh, oscillating function with a limit. So let me see, I'm gonna go back to Desmos. Anybody play guitar or some string instrument? Anybody? Anybody ever seen a string instrument before and heard it like played? No? You never? You're like, what is that? Um, where is that thing? Here it is. Thank God that once you pluck a guitar string, what happens over time? Quieter and quieter. Yes. Oh my God. Can you imagine if that didn't happen? Every guitar string ever, ever strong, ever, what do you call it? Strummed? There it is. Um, if it just never calmed down and just kept going forever, we'd walk around, hey! Because it would just be this background, like, Bleh! So thank God, it actually looks like this. Uh, I'm, I'm really zoomed in, I forgot. Holy shit. Do this. Let me make it a little bit easier to see. There we go. So isn't that what you would expect? The frequency of a string should die out. So this is called damped oscillation. What's the limit as x goes to infinity of this? Zero. Zero. Why? Because there's a point past which it never gets, like right here, past 20. It never goes above this line or below this line. You guys see that? That, if you think about it, that's what it has to happen. If it if it always stays the same distance away, then that it, that can't be the limit. If that really is a limit, it eventually has to get arbitrarily close and stay that close. If it never does that, that's not the limit. It's not what it agrees on. And real quick, just to show you the rest of this. Uh, you can do it, Jeff. Can you? No, what am I trying to do? Oh, I forgot the tip. There we go. That's kind of like the floor and the ceiling functions, right? Doesn't this feel a little bit like squeeze here? Because isn't this live between these two? Do you see that? That really makes it cool, especially with all the colors. It's nice. All right. So Desmos kicks ass, by the way. I mean, again.
Again, if we had enough computer labs and stuff, we'd probably teach a lot more stuff on the computer like that. All right. That's about as far as I wanted to make it, so that's perfect. So next time I'll have the quizzes graded. We have that group quiz, one, two, three, two, five. I'll have the practice test next time. So a week from today is going to be a review day with a test that following Tuesday. Okay. Let me show this to you guys at home. There you go.